Welcome back to Audio Architecture. Last week we took a look at a few microphone examples. So now that you know a little bit more about how microphones work, it's time to discuss where to place them. So today, I'd like to go over a few guidelines and general principles about microphone placement. It's just as important as your mic selection. A cheap mic placed in the right spot can be as effective as an expensive mic placed in the wrong spot. So start by considering where the performers will be placed according to sight, feeling, and acoustics. Don't overlook the importance of sight and feel because they can both heavily influence a musician's performance. Musicians often non-verbally communicate to each other during a studio performance, so it's a good idea to keep a line of sight between them in the studio. Make them feel comfortable. Have them play in different locations around the room. This helps determine the most optimal place for the quality of sound for that particular instrument. This is a great starting point for beginning a studio session. It's also important to determine where the majority of the sound is coming from and the direction it's being projected. The easiest thing to do is find out where an instrument sounds best and start by placing a microphone there. At this point, it's about trial and error. From adjusting mic placement to comparing different mic positionings, moving a microphone, even a small distance, could drastically change the sound. Sound is divided into three categories. Direct path, early reflections, and reverberation. Direct path is the quickest path to the listener and helps determine where a sound is coming from. Direct path also provides a very clear sound. Early reflection occurs right after the direct path and gives us a sense of the environment's surface. Reverberation helps us identify the size of the space. With these three categories in mind, let's dive into the fundamental styles of mic placement according to distance. Here are some great starting points. Super basic mic placements for generic instruments. Each position generates a different result that affects the sound's direct path, early reflection, and reverberation. Close miking is placing the microphone from zero to about a foot away from the source. This provides the best isolation for the source and reduces the environment and the sound the most. Close miking allows you to pick up the direct path primarily with little or no early reflections or reverberation present in the sound. Close miking also provides an in-your-face sound that can be described as tight and clear. Ultimately, it isn't very natural. That's why it's common to combine close miking with other techniques or to add artificial reverb to the sound. Watch out for proximity effect when close miking. When you're accent miking, it helps accent a sound, as the name suggests. This is great for soloists and ensembles. This mic technique captures both direct path and early reflections, with a small amount of reverb in the sound. Next we have room or distant miking. When room miking, it's good to keep the microphone three feet away from the source. Critical distance is the point where the sound's direct path and reverberant field are equal. I would consider this the most natural miking technique this is the distance we would listen to someone play drums or play a guitar through an amplifier. This technique is also often combined with close miking. Room miking doesn't provide much isolation, so when you're miking this way, the sound will be made up of the direct path, the early reflections, and the reverberant field more evenly. Ambient miking is the last technique, and it's miking beyond the critical distance. Like room miking, it is often combined with close miking to retain clarity. With ambient miking, the reverberant field is dominant, and the source is usually less clear. Remember, these are general points of reference. In the real world, there isn't always an obvious answer, which is why you've got to be willing to try different combinations of mic placement techniques in order to find the best sound available. Quickly finding the optimal position for a mic is a useful talent that every engineer should have. The next step is finding signal flow. So next time, we'll have to talk about cables, which are important pieces of equipment in any studio. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week for Audio Architecture.